Good morning, church. Welcome to St. Paul's in 2019. Don't be so excited. Settle down. We are glad to welcome you here. It just seems like just it was about a year ago that I stood here and said, welcome to services in 2018. And here we are just a year later, right? Can you believe it? Um, it is a wonderful day that we gather. Let us know that you're here. Uh, there's a little slip inside your bulletin. If you want to tear that out and fill it out. Drop that in the offering plate a little bit later. That way we know that you are here this morning. Um, out on the table, out in the lobby area, there are those little boxes for offering. This is the last Sunday. I'm going to mention those, folks. If you haven't picked those up, find your name in alphabetical order. You might recall I shared last Sunday that if you are giving online, you may not find a box out there. But if you want one, email, call the church office, and they will definitely get you a box uh, for all of your offerings if you'd like to have that as well. Uh, three great events uh, coming up next Sunday, January 13th. We start a confirmation class. That confirmation class will meet at 9 o'clock in the morning well, every morning Sunday uh, for several weeks. I can't remember how many, 10 weeks, I think, something like that. 10 weeks, a bunch, from 9 to 1045 and, and until April. And if you are, that's a seven, seventh grade student, around around the seventh grade and older is what they're looking for for that. So connect with the office if you'd like to do that. There's a congregational care uh, training on January 15th. That's next Tuesday at 7 p.m. And then I'm excited to announce a 12-week Bible study. What a great way to start the new year, church. Consider being a part of that. It starts on January 23rd. More information was in the Friday reminders. And if you want any of that, email, call the church office, and we'll get you connected uh, with that new Bible study. Please consider doing that to start 2019. All right, church, let's prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude this morning. was especially lovely this morning. Thank you, Miss Ramona. Church, I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our opening hymn. This morning, as we gather this first Sunday, let us sing, This is the Day of New Beginnings. This is a day of new beginnings, time to remember and move on, time to believe what love is bringing, laying to rest the pain that's gone. For by the life and death of Jesus, God's mighty spirit now as then Can make for us a world of difference As faith and hope are born again Then let us with the spirit's daring Step from the past and leave behind our disappointment, guilt, and grieving, seeking new paths and sure to find. In faith we'll gather round the table 
to taste and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to invite you into our call to worship this morning, which can be found both in your bulletins and on the screens in front of you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of God has risen among us. We are awake. We are alive. Praise God for deliverance and blessings. Lift up your eyes to see all around you. Let your hearts rejoice and be radiant with hope. May justice water the earth like a shower. Let righteousness and peace abound. Receive again the promises of the gospel. Participate in the mystery of Jesus Christ. God's ways are being revealed to us today. Our church proclaims the riches of Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Church, before you're seated, would you share a word of greeting with those around you this morning? morning. Welcome to St. Paul's. Welcome to 2019. It has begun and, and we're blessed that you've chosen to be here to start the new year. Uh, thank you for doing that. It's a beautiful day today and it's, it's time as we receive our tithes and offerings. I'm going to ask you to, to join me in blessing all that we're about to receive for Christ's work. Would you join me please? For the joy of giving, we offer the products of our labor for the ministry of this church in outreach to the world with concern for those who are poor oppressed and needy we rededicate ourselves as helpers and advocates out of devotion to christ 
we commit our best that the church may bear witness among the principalities and powers of this world. Help us all, O oh God, to be faithful stewards. Amen. For ushers will prepare for the offering.
I am a poor pilgrim, a poor pilgrim of sorrow. I am left in this wide world, this wide world. First scripture to rate today comes out of Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. 
And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thank you. Well, 2019 is here. 2018 is, is in the books. So to say, I hope you had a wonderful holiday. Um, for, mo for most of our society, uh, Christmas is over. I haven't been to the stores yet, but I'm guessing they're looking red with Valentine's things. We don't waste a lot of time moving on to what's next, right? So for many of us, Christmas was a, maybe a wonderful memory. But in the church year, Christmas starts on December 25th. Fifth. Advent ends, the time of preparing for, of waiting for. Christmas begins on the 25th of December and, and continues for 12 days. That's why we had that annoying song when we were growing up. You remember, right? On the first day of Christmas, sing it. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. How many people know all 12 of those? Yeah, that, you know, and I'm, yeah, I could probably tell you who knows the 12. It's not me, believe me. But the song was, was about those 12 days, uh, and he must have loved her because he kept increasing that more and more as it went. The idea of the 12 days of Christmas is based on the tradition that the wise men, or, or the magi as they're sometimes called, arrived to worship the Christ child about 12 days after the birth. Now, I, I don't want to argue, but it might not have been 12 days. It might have been 13. It might have been 22. Some people think it might have been about two years. It doesn't matter. We believe that they traveled and they followed a star and, and that they appeared at some point. And you might remember this, this passage from verse 11 that Pastor Allison read said, they arrived and they went into the house. They didn't say into the inn or into the stable. So there, some time had passed. We know that. They were evidently at a house where, where the young child was. But the Christian church celebrates the arrival of the wise men today, 12 days after Christmas, as the day the Magi came to offer their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Special day we call Epiphany because it was that time when the world, when, they, when he was recognized for the first time as Christ the King and, and recognized as the God of all people and all nations. Here's one to think about. I think it's interesting that the first people that were to bow down and worship Jesus besides the shepherds were more than likely of a different religion. They were not Christians. We know that because Christ. 
they were probably not Jewish. How do we know this? We don't know, but they came from far away. They came from the east. We really don't even know for sure that there were three, except that the gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we put one person with each gift, and that's fine. If we try to determine where they might have been from, we can pull out a map of, of as it existed in the biblical times, and we can look east from Bethlehem, and we can assume they may have been from Iraq or Iran. They may have been from Syria, Saudi Arabia, but they were most likely of a different religion. Everything has changed since that time. The names of the countries have changed. The religions have changed. Muhammad hadn't even been born yet, so, we, so they weren't Muslim. We're not sure exactly where their faith heritage was. But in this day of religious and ethnic and racial hostility, I think it's important to acknowledge that all people are ultimately God's children. When my family first arrived here four and a half years ago, Gloria and I had an opportunity. We had been planning a trip for a couple of years, and that October, we traveled to Austria. It's someplace we'd always want to go to Vienna and took the train over to Salzburg. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you just how sophisticated we really are. We did not go see Mozart's house, but we took the Sound of Music tour. Does that give you an idea? That's just what we do. We wanted to see where the movie was filmed, and, and we did, and the gazebo and the house, and, and uh, we really enjoy that movie. For the, If you might be a fan of that movie, The Sound of Music, you might remember that the main character's name was Maria, and she was actually part, this was based on a true story of the Von Trapp, very musical family, and Maria was uh, in, a, in a convent studying to become a nun when she, she felt a call to leave and became the governess and and was later married to the uh, the gentleman the father who was a widower it was a wonderful story what you might not know about her is she was extremely well versed in the bible i mean she she was living in a convent she was studying it every day um and in her book that she wrote later in life called Yesterday, Today, and Forever. Wonderful book. She, she tells about a beautiful tradition. I don't know if this is true or not, but it's a tradition. It's something that's been passed down, you know, usually verbally from family to family, and I, and I really liked it. According to this tradition, the three wise men were residents of three different parts of the world and were most likely different races. I'm not sure why we just always in our minds, at least me growing up, assumed three wise men were all huddled together at one particular spot somewhere when they saw the star and they all linked hands and, and that might not have been how it happened. I love this thought that they might have been three different people in different countries of different races and they each saw the star on their own. God can do that. This is something God could and would do. And they all began this trek from different points. And at some point of the journey, they met as they were following the same star. And because they had the same mission and the same vision, that they decided to travel together. With many miles to travel, the final star led them to the holy city of Jerusalem where they would have that encounter uh, that Pastor Allison read about with the brutal monarch named Herod. I don't think it's surprising Maria von Trapp in her own background of, of fleeing Austria um, and the Nazis that she compared Herod to Adolf Hitler in her book. When the wise men left Herod's court, they once again followed the star until it came to rest over, over the town of Bethlehem. And there before the Christ child, these three men of different races, of different nationalities, each bowed down and presented a gift. It's only a legend, of course, but what a wonderful reminder that, that Epiphany, this day we celebrate today, is about the, the revelation of God to everyone, to all people, not just to particular people in a particular location or, or denominate. It has nothing. It's all people everywhere. And that is something God would do. We are all God's children. We are all one family. Nevertheless, prejudices 
regarding religion and nationalities and uh, races that just is still alive and they've been going on since the beginning of time. For example, I read at one point it was standard practice for some in the West Indies to openly hold their noses whenever an American would walk past. Well, that'll make you feel welcome, wouldn't it? It's existed for a long time, and we've been on both sides of it, folks. Hatred and bigotry are everywhere. Uh, You might know my family and I took off and drove to New York City. That's why we weren't here. I had all three of my girls home, and I thought, I don't know if this is going to happen again for a long time. So we got and we drove to New York, stopped and saw my son in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and just had a wonderful time. But it reminded me of a a story I heard about a a Midwesterner who was traveling to visit New York City, and his friend said, are you going to go to the United Nations building when you get there? And he said, heavens, no. I heard the place is just crawling with foreigners. (laughs) Well, yeah, I would assume so. Prejudice is deeply rooted. It's part of human nature. And if you don't think it still exists, you're, you're probably not paying attention. Turn on the TV or, or open a newspaper. It doesn't die easily. But if we go back to the book of Genesis, Genesis, we find that we're all the same race. We're all part of that same race. It's called the human race. We all have the same origin. And God is not partial to a person or a nation. Now, I need to say also about that. Sometimes God does choose individual people or individual nations to do a particular task. Israel was called to be a light to the nations. I personally, personally, don't feel that God probably loved Israel more than he loved the other nations, though Israel probably wouldn't agree with me. But he chose Israel to to be an example, to set out And to be an example of holiness for the world, he had a special task for them. They were to be the light of Christ. Jesus, in turn, selected then men and women to to help in that work. To be the new light and the new salt and the new bread uh, for those that were living in darkness. That's what the church is about. That's why we're here. We're not here to be a club. We're here to make a difference in the lives of people that are are struggling and living in a dark world. Dr. James Dobson once told about a friend who was piloting a small engine uh, aircraft. And he was headed towards a small country airport and, and night fell quicker than possible, which I've had happen to me before. But by the time he reached the airport, he couldn't make out the, the one paved strip in the middle and there were not, the lights weren't on and his small plane did not have landing lights. And, and he just totally panicked and didn't know what to do and he started to circle the airport. And he didn't know if he had enough fuel to get back to the one airport he knew of. And he just prayed and he circled for almost two hours. And what happened next had to be an answer to prayer because a, a farmer that was living nearby heard the plane going around and around and around and kind of assumed what probably happened. So he got out and got in his truck, drove a quarter mile to the airport, and started driving back and forth with his lights on the runway so the pilot could make his way. And as the pilot began his approach, he stopped at the end of the runway with his lights headed straight down. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we as a people or as a church could be that saving light into someone's darkness? Maybe it's a friend that's having having family problems or, or someone who's struggling with addictions. Might be helping a child get into a Sunday school program that will show them the love of Christ and help to nurture their faith. It may be involving yourself in the life of a, a resident of a nursing home or, or someone who is homebound, someone who has no one to talk to or somebody that just needs to share Christ's love. God's love for each of us is, is strong and not more for one over another. We're to be his body. We're to be his light. And each time we bring that light into someone's life, it brings us closer to the day when the entire world will walk in Christ's light. It's always been God's will for this world, and God will not be defeated. That day will come. There will be a a day, we're told, when the nations will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. There will come a time when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
God is at work in this world and the lives of his people. I want to share one more story because it's, it's a true story. Dr. Eugene Bryce, it comes from a time, there was a time that a lot of you might remember when radio was the dominant form of mass media. Do you remember those days? In the next service, no one will believe me. <laughs> Seriously. But there was a day when radio was it. It's the way things were communicated. And there was a time when a sheep herder in Montana wrote a letter to the NBC Symphony in New York City telling about a problem he had. He was an amateur musician. He, he was a violinist. He was trying to learn, and he listened to the symphony each Sunday evening on his radio. It was a weekly show, but his violin had gotten badly out of tune, and he was isolated out on a ranch in Montana, and he had no way to tune it. And so he wrote in and asked them a favor. And so on Sunday afternoon, June 18th, 1938, which was the same year my parents were born, at the beginning of the program of the NBC Symphony, a loud and clear note was sent out over the air. It was a beautiful and clear A note. And from that A note... A sheep herder in Montana was able to tune his violin. Christ, of course, is God's A note to the world, which is out of tune. We are those whom he has called to sound that note whenever we can. We do that by modeling our lives, by the unconditional love that God has for all people. All people. It matters not where they come from or what mistakes they might have made. All people are God's children and are in need of God's wonders and complete love. And by his grace, we're to show the world the unfailing love of God at work in our lives so that the world might see where it came from and why it exists. It's part of the greatest adventure in the world, and we get to be a part of it. Today, we will we'll come together and, and share the sacrament of Holy Communion. Holy Communion here is as I say every time we do it, it is not a United Methodist tradition, and it is not a Raymore tradition. This is Christ's table, and we invite any and all that are part of, uh, or feel they even have a need for Christ, to come and, and partake of this. I invite you to join me for the liturgy, which will magically appear on the screen with Daniel's help. Right, Daniel? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image, breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water, and by spirit. And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night which he gave himself up for us, he, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat all of you. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the meal was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. 
And he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit and us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit make us all one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us lift our voices together with the prayer that Jesus taught us all when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. If our servers would come forward, please. table has been set, all are invited to join us.
close our worship together today, I invite you to stand for a closing hymn. There's a song in the air. Let's lift our voices. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.